Our first video lesson here is going to introduce you to the topic of elements and more specifically the physical and chemical properties that determine what an element is. For the lesson, what you should be able to do is be able to identify physical properties. You should also be able to identify chemical properties for an element. Uh, and I would also like you to be able to identify an element as a metal, nonmetal, or metalloid from its provided properties. This may be accomplished by the end of the video lesson or uh, through the lab material over the next couple of days. The universe is composed of 118 known elements, and this includes metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Each of these 118 elements has their own physical and chemical properties that we will explore uh, in the labs over the next few days. This slide is a copy of the periodic table which shows all 118 elements and it's organized in a way that there are repeating patterns which we'll explore further over the course of this year. Um, but what you'll notice is that it is color coordinated for metals, nonmetals, and metalloids with the metals found mainly on the left hand side of the periodic table and the nonmetals are found on the right hand side of the periodic table with a staircase type uh, divider that is the metalloids. An element is defined by its physical and chemical properties and a physical property is a property of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing the substance composition. Some examples of this include the color and shape of the element itself. Uh, other examples of physical properties include the state of matter, so whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas. Additional examples include the boiling or melting point of the element. Uh, the key thing to remember is that you are not changing the substance composition when you are, ch are determining these physical properties. In the lab tomorrow, in addition to making observations about the physical appearance of the elements that we've been testing, you're also going to test for three additional physical properties. Those are the conductivity of electricity, the conductivity of heat, and the malleability of the element. And when we talk about malleability, malleability is how well the element can be reshaped uh, by a hammer or a press without breaking the material into smaller parts given set of physical properties for each element. Every element also has a given set of chemical properties that identify that ind individual element. And a chemical property is the ability of a substance to undergo a specific chemical change. And otherwise what this means is that you have to react the element itself with another element um, to determine what its chemical properties are. Chemical properties include the ability for an element or compound to rust or burn or corrode or oxidize. Once the element undergoes one of these changes, you're not able to get the initial element back out. So in real, real term examples, this would be like a piece of iron rusting. You can't get the original piece of iron back out of it. Metals are a collection of elements that have similar physical properties. Whether we're talking about the aluminum found in this foil or the aluminum in this can, or even the iron that's found in this magnet, even though they don't look the same, we can group them based on the similar physical properties that they have. When we talk about metals, what we're talking about is a collection of elements that all have a shiny metallic luster. Uh, you may need to scratch below the surface to find it if that metal has rusted or oxidized, but it's there. All metals, except for mercury, are solid at room temperature. All metals are also good conductors of heat and electricity, which we're going to test in the lab tomorrow. Uh, the last physical property that most metals uh, share is that most metals are malleable. And what that means is that if it's malleable, we can form this into a different shape without breaking it uh, into different pieces. And when we say form it in a different shape, we're talking about either by hammering it or pressing it. Of metals are gold, which is pictured here, 
on the slide along with iron and so above the pic picture of iron which has the symbol FE I have a smart car um, up there which also contains uh, small amounts of iron in the construction of it. Additional metals include mercury, which is the only metal that's not a solid at room temperature. And then we've also got potassium, which is found in bananas that you need uh, every day. When we talk about nonmetals, it's a little bit more challenging to categorize a group of elements based on their physical properties. In general, nonmetals are considered anything that's not a metal. So all nonmetals are poor conductors of electricity and heat. But at, outside of that, there's a lot of variety. You have most of those nonmetals are going to be gases like oxygen or nitrogen found in the air, or they could be a solid like sulfur or carbon. There is only one nonmetal that's a liquid at room temperature, and that's bromine, which you might put into your pool. Um, and then there's also some variety in the color and the brittleness or hardness of that material. So if you take an element like carbon, which can be found as graphite, which is in your writing utensils as a pencil, uh, the graphite in that is going to be brittle. It's not going to be very shiny. But carbon also, under different conditions, forms into a diamond, which is very hard and has a brilliant luster, luster to it. And that's what you want to use to make jewelry out of. Like I was saying before, nonmetals are a little bit more difficult to categorize. Uh, so I have here a picture of bromine, which is a liquid at room temperature that you might find in products such as Mountain Dew. And then below that, I have two examples of carbon. Uh, one form of carbon is graphite, which you use in your writing utensils every day. It's what has replaced lead in pencils. And the other form of carbon is that found in diamonds. Uh, so one is very brittle and the other one's very solid. Additional examples of nonmetals include the noble gases, which include krypton and neon, which you may be familiar with in neon lights, or any other kind of light uh, found in Las Vegas. And then there are also examples of nonmetals that are solids at room temperature that include iodine. Uh, which you may get swabbed with before receiving any medical treatment um, at a hospital. The last grouping of elements are referred to as metalloids, and these separate the metals and nonmetals on the periodic table from each other in a stair step organization, and they have properties of both metals and nonmetals. And not all, in addition, these properties can change depending on what the conditions are. For example, you have silicon, which is a solid at room temperature, and it looks kind of like a metal. But depending on how it's formed, you can use it in producing something like an oven mitt, which is going to be resistant to the transfer of heat. Or you could get to be in a form that's going to be useful for making uh, computer chips, and it's going to transfer electricity really well. Another example of a metalloid includes tellurium, which is found in the production of making CDs and DVDs.